you can stop. Right? Why? Okay, let's not be stopped. Um, all brakes were removed in the 70s, but early on, the horse, the horse was possible. Ability is not much of a problem. You could if you wanted to and if you were, uh, if you were ready to. So, these questions are important. Are people willing to divorce? Is it culturally ac uh, acceptable? And is it economically possible? Okay, first period in our 20th century study of divorce, we see, or censoring sees, an increased willingness. Um, people apply for divorce together. It's a joint initiative, more often than it used to be. It increases to be a joint initiative, and people use it no fault sections in the law. Um, so there was a people <coughs> start to think differently about marriage. You could negotiate the ending of the marriage. That was a new idea. Um, no fault, perhaps we stay friends afterwards, something like that, but we can stop it. If you're not happy, we can stop it. Um, but, economically, it was virtually impossible for many women to divorce. So what's the real break on divorce in this first part of the 20th century? Women had no economic power. Keep the paradox in mind. You want a happy marriage, you marry for love, you're stuck in a breadwinner model, you're not happy with it, and you can't even divorce because you have no problem. Okay, so that's the very ironic revolution in this early 20th century. Women were imprisoned in their marriage, something like that. And they made people want to start to in such a romantic atmosphere. Okay. We like graphs, um, very simple. It's economic hardship or, or economic power that is important. Um, in occupational groups where the wages are higher, the divorce rates are higher. If the occupational groups where, uh, um, where women were employed, <coughs> divorce is higher. So it's related to power of women, economic power. Next, so many people are housewives, but that decreases in the 50s. Yet, the divorce rate stays stable. Interesting. So here we have, this is preparing for the storm of the most divorce rate. What we see is that, Sunstrom says, at least, um, there is a permissive culture on sexuality. There is a new view of marriage. And we have a fast increase of housewives, but we have as well the conservative customer ideology with which is still dominant. So this is this is not in line with each other. People are building up capacity to divorce, but somebody needed to push the system, need to bring control. So that's something that's going on. And then afterwards, when all women not all women. Most women uh, went to study, earned wages, earned more money, they had the economic power to divorce. And then we see the massive rise in divorce. So this paradoxical situation was solved because the economic power of women increased. Okay. Love, marriage, power of women, that's closely connected. Okay. In the 60s, mass divorce, you know the story, affluence, even more social security. Very important. Um, the underlying assumption of, of this story of Sandstrom is that in previous times, People were not happy with their marriage, but could not divorce because they had no economic power. It makes sense, but there might be more to the story. Keep that in mind. Okay. Um, just to give a, a comparison, this is the situation in Belgium in the 20th century, 20th century from 1935 onwards. We see something similar. 
and in Sweden, but later. There are many variations on the theme, but we're, we're also a most like society, of course. Good. Next episode. Ninth subject and <coughs> We're still with you. The other students didn't make it, by the way. No problem. <coughs> When I was born in 1973, there was the old crisis. You don't remember? I remember. Every year, when I listened to the radio, not once a year, of course, but there was this thing about crisis. In the 70s, crisis. In the 80s, crisis. In the 90s, crisis. Used to drive the crisis. Always crisis. But I think the standard of living in Belgium doubled since 1973. Forget to talk about crisis, standard of living increased massively. We're always good to um, Women now go to university. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> uh, this, actually, you, you know all this, I don't have to tell you. Interestingly, we have a post material world now, a post material culture. Individual autonomy is important, so gender equality is important, so you have to be tolerant towards the other ones, uh, their autonomy. And we are not in an early modern, uh, the modernization transition, 19th century, early 20th century, which was very rational. We are now in a more emotional state. We have the luxury to be more emotional. Um, this is the era of emotion, blah, 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 and expressive individualism. So good. These are the late, uh, late modernity theorists, you know, uh, back in the given that one. We probably hate them, <laughs> but you're lost in sociology now. But um, that's their period. Okay, what uh, happens? A radical change in the trends here of age and marriage. It goes up again. And we stop to marry, actually. We, we, well, we don't stop to marry, but many people don't marry, even though they have a watch. Uh, so, very, very uh, radical changes in terms of marriage. Demographers have called it a second demographic transition, not only marriage, also fertility and so on. Um, you know that, you heard of the concepts, uh, of course. Uh, cohabitation, childbearing as a marriage, divorce, that families, you know the story, that's the important part. I think, interestingly, family sociologists have a different name for one aspect of it, of the, the marital aspect of it, and that's the deinstitutionalization of marriage. Um, marriage is an institution, it's, it's a procedure to act uh, towards some problems or issues. Okay. One man, one boy, and raise children, and legal bonds, etc. But all these norms that tell you what to do and how to do it, with regard to marriage, they, they become weaker. It's not very clear anymore. You can see it in a formal way, but also in terms of contents. Formally, because of the divorce, this that families had to you have they, they, they meet each other and they have to present each other. Okay, okay, you're my stepbrother, something like that. How shall we work together? Are you now my brother, with whom I have a special bond, or not? You are the friend of my mother. You are a significant other to me, but how significant are you? Can you forbid me to go to Tomorrowland? No, of course not. My mother, perhaps. Or my mother. Might be my mother. But that's, these are the issues. So we have negotiations. Always. Always and always and always. Shall we marry or not? Shall we, shall we live in sin? Unmarried cohabitation, or we can have a legal cohabitation, something like that. Is it interesting for the fiscality of our family economy? Very difficult. Um, can we command our children? Yes, but to some extent, no. But we have to talk to them and respect their feelings and their interests, and it's very difficult. I do the army, or you do the army. It's, it has to be decided. Um, shall we stay together or not? If it's not lifelong marriage, you can divorce, okay? At which point is the 
unhappiness strong enough to make bombs. I want to be teacher, that's it. Same sex marriages, you know that. We, we, we see it everywhere and always. We have television programs. How to teach us how to, to deal with these children because we don't know it anymore. My father told me that, he, he said, life is difficult for you. You have to, to talk with your children. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was very complicated. He, he loves my children when they're between zero and two, and then um, they have self-consciousness, uh, two, and then they start to, to be a rebel also towards the grandparents, and then kids. <laughs> you can have that. <laughs> Solve your problems yourself. In France, same sex, same sex marriage. I mean, it's, it, they fight in public on this topic. And so I can have you can make thousands of slides on these topics. Negotiations in the family and in the society on how to do that. To marry and to live together and to raise your children. This is highly problematic. It's very Difficult. It's not fixed. It's deinstitutionalization. Okay. Some consequences for marriage. Um, marriage in more diverse society is an individualized marriage. <coughs> if you have all these things that have to be decided, you, you have to talk to each other. You have to negotiate all the time. I prepare you. You're young people, you, you might be aware of it, but it will only get worse. Now you don't have children, perhaps, when the first child comes, and the second, and the third, the third, then you need somebody else, and your partner needs somebody else, and you said, it's, it's very complicated, it's extremely complicated. Um, and it's an individual, individualized marriage, because you have to arrange your problems yourself, as a couple, but also as an individual. Because we are post-materialists, we have to realize ourselves, we have higher order needs. We want a marriage project, a partnership, partnership project. It has to be something of ourselves. We have to, have to express ourselves in a marriage. We have to have a fantastic relationship. We have to work on it with these children out there. Work, career, it's very difficult. Ulrich Beck says you have a, we have a do-it-yourself biography. It's not standardized. Then you meet somebody, then you marry, then you work, then you have children. No, you have to decide everything. So my marriage project. That's that's it. Gillens. That's about the negotiation and you have to make something out of it. What's the pure content? We have a pure relationship. An intimate partnership entered into for its own sake. The couple. Again, the couple, not the economic bond, but the sentimental bond you grow together, which lasts only as long as both partners are satisfied with the rewards and rewards are intensity enough. We can stop it if we, if we don't feel enough intensity enough anymore. It's a, it's a pure, superb relationship. We have to have the best partner in the world. When you feel this, Lady Gaga, you know it's the guru. Remember, your career will never wake up and tell you that it doesn't love you anymore. You need careers. We are career men and women, but then somebody at home says, Hey, you forget me. Where are the intimate talks? You have problems to arrange with the children, etc. But also, you have to do something mm -hmm. together. Okay. I guess you have to use city trip to Barcelona or Paris. <laughs> Pure relationships. Nothing of, of this is biographical. I have to say. <laughs> 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 should, should I not watch this movie? <laughs> I guarantee you. Um, okay, so pure relationship for itself. And we still marry. We still marry. We have. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is so fantastic. I'm not a member yet. <laughs> I'm not married. <laughs> Become a fan of your marriage at Facebook. Then you have to go at the Facebook uh, page, My Marriage. Many people are, you have to make something out of your marriage. It's 
the quality mark of your relationship. Marriage is the end product of a fantastic relationship. And you show the community how great you are as a couple. It's not a marker of conformity, it's a marker of prestige. You tell your friends and family how splendid your city trip with you. <laughs> your husband was and the kids were with their grandparents, parents, because they are 15 year old. But it was a honeymoon still. It's the, not the end, but it's a high point you go towards marriage. I know people in my environment, people's <laughs> environment, yeah, she should I marry when the children are 15 and they can be with them at a ceremony somewhere in the south of Spain. <laughs> Okay, very interesting, I think. Um, but this is the situation now. Let's go to the next episode, but it's shaky. Okay, let's, let's have a... Um, if you know we marry for love and it's a super relationship and there are pure relationships and gender equality is important, etc, etc. Okay, that's how, how can we look at the future? Um, First of all, let's uh, do what a typical scholar would do, look at uh, Ch uh, Sherlin, Henry Sherlin, who has written about the deinstitutionalization. Uh, what are his uh, future prospects? Um, we might go to a reinstitutionalization, back to some decades ago. Um, less cohabitation, less divorce, but this would also mean less individualism. It's not very likely. Perhaps also a gender labor division, which is perhaps also not very likely. So he's not really, uh, he's, he doesn't think that's a real future for marriage. Um, or, second possibility, you can have a continu continuation of the current situation, um, 